So here we are, in Muna orbit, ready to begin our descent down to the surface. All we need to do is transfer our crew to the lander. We're actually going to, I think, I think we're going to take them down on, on these little seats. But what my concern actually is that we may not have enough life support to come down all the way from up here. So I think I am actually going to use the main spacecraft to move into a tight a low tight orbit so that we don't have as long to wait. Uh, so let's do that. We've actually got a maneuver node already mapped in um, and I think we are lined up on it. So let's just time accelerate round to that. Here we go. Round, round, four minutes. It's probably not going to be a massively long burn. Three, two, one. All right, fine. Burn. Not look. Ten second burn. That's all. That's all that's needed. Five, four, three, two, one, cut engines, mark. Good, so we're now we are in a, uh, let's get rid of this maneuver node. Good, we've gotten rid of the maneuver node. But we are in an orbit of 119. Um, we can actually lower this even further. Look, let's bring up our control and just bring it right down, right down low over the light side because that's where we want to land obviously we want to oh hold on um now if we point this up is that gonna bring us no 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 that's not the way we wanted to go let's try down down that's not where we wanted to go either well okay it doesn't really matter too much um 120 110 let's just keep going down 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 and cut it there. Now we are on the equator. We're uh, we're a little we're a little bit on the ecliptic actually. Um, so it might be nice to um, uh, well, uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm sure we can manage. I'm sure we can manage the rendezvous uh, just fine um, as as we are. I mean, we do, we can't afford to linger very long in orbit with these guys on the um, on the outside of the spacecraft. We can always cycle them. Could always cycle them through the spacecraft to refresh their uh, their air supply if we need to, so um, so we'll do that. Uh, let's time accelerate until we're around the other side, moving around as we come through Moona Sunrise onto the light side of the moon. And by light side, we actually mean the daylight side, not just the side which is tidally locked with Kerbin. I don't know actually if the moon is tidally locked with Kerbin. Certainly the moon is tidally locked with Earth, so it always presents the same face to us. And so uh, when people talk about the, the dark side of the moon, actually, usually what they mean is the far side of the moon, as in the moon that faces away from the Earth and therefore that we never see from the Earth. We've seen it because we have spacecraft and stuff now, but uh, right, look, we're there. Stop talking about space stuff. I do love space stuff. I might have to do a KSP series just because I love talking about space stuff. Space is one of my great passions. Um, all right, Valentina, let us move up to the command. The, the hatch is Oh, no! Oh, why is it obstructed? Is it is it obstructed because... No, I, I think it is these uh, these these parachutes. I was thinking maybe if we decouple, but I think it's the parachutes that are blocking it, which is a nightmare scenario because it means we're not going to be able to get back in afterwards, are we? If we get out, look, let's test it now. Um, I think we can transfer, right? Even though it means traveling magically through uh, a decoupler, a fuel tank, an RCS tank. Um, there must be like a tube or something going through. Let's 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 do that right. Let's let's just transfer. Where are we? Uh, where are we? Right, transfer. We'll transfer. Um, is it Bill or Bob that's the scientist? I, I don't know. Scientist or engineer? Either of them will do. We'll transfer them to the lander can because we didn't put any docking on. If we just put a docking ring on, we could have docked them to each other, and then that would have been fine. All right, fine. Look, uh, let's try let's try EVAing. Let's hope. Fingers crossed, right? Fingers crossed this works. All right. Using your scientific and or engineering skills, whichever it is you have in abundance, uh, Bill or Bob, whoever it is we transferred, we want you to um, come here. That's right. Uh, grab. Board. Oh, it works. All right, fine. All right, fine. Because it works, we don't have to worry. So 
Eevee, oh no, we need to uh, transfer again. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to transfer magically uh, through the fuel tanks to the command pod. Uh, then we're going to have to EVA, that's right, uh, RCS, and we want you to get into uh, one of these things here. Board. There we go. Good. Uh, now we want to e transfer Bill, because Valentina obviously needs to pilot. So uh, she needs to be the one actually in the command pod. Good. Board here. Fantastic. Oh, we're nearly there, guys. We're nearly there. We are nearly at uh, the point. We're going to over overshoot our closest approach, probably. But um, these things can't be helped. Right. Okay. The land can is now fully charged. We have two Kerbals on the outside. And we are ready to begin our descent. So uh, decouple from the main spacecraft in three... Two, one, firing explosive bolts. We have separation. Fire up these engines. Engines are armed. Uh, RCS as well. Let's just translate away a little bit. Um, I forget how we do this. Is it like that? I just turned my lights on. <laughs> these will do. Anyway, look, we just need to translate away from the spacecraft a little bit. And now we need to... We just need to turn around, basically. Turn around. Um, why is that there? Surely... Hold on. What's that? That cannot possibly be our orbital... Let's get a maneuver note. Get a maneuver node for this. Add a maneuver node. We want to just come straight down. This is not going to be an exercise in ultra efficient descent, but you know it is what it is. I don't get why that's there. Are we pointing in the right direction? Control from here. We were controlling. Oh, we were controlling from one of the seats. I think. Right. That's why. That's why our maneuver node was in the wrong place. Right. Fire the engines. I'm just going to decelerate to a standing stop and then just drop straight towards the moon uh, and then we will fire up the engines again in order to land successfully once we've approached. We're going to do this straight off. Um, we've got loads of excess fuel I think so we're not going to worry too much. I think our horizontal velocity is... don't know. Uh, let's switch to surface mode. Okay fine. Um, let's orientate ourselves up straight up there we go on our deceleration node uh, whatever this thing is called I, you know I, I've, it's been a long time since I've played Kerbal Space Program so I apologise if I'm not getting all the terminology and things right it's also been a while since Scott's uh, Interstellar Quest series finished so I haven't even watched a lot of Kerbal Space Program we're just gonna it's gonna take ages actually for us to fall towards the surface so let's just time accelerate down a bit oh okay we don't want to get too close um i don't have any kind of idea of uh of what speed we're we doing 287 we're at 10,000 meters let's just slow ourselves a little bit just so we can get an idea of how quickly we need to slow down i think we're gonna be fine look i think we're gonna be absolutely fine Let's just cut the engines again. We can. This thing's got a ton of acceleration. Uh, let's get the landing gear down before we forget. And um, we'll put the lights on just for fun. Did I put the lights on? Here we go. Lights. All right. Let's have the engines again. We're coming in for final approach now. We want to arrest all horizontal momentum. So we'll just angle out a little bit. Cut the engines there. I don't think we really need the RCS on for this, to be honest with you. Continuing our descent, 26 meters per second and accelerating under gravity, 5,000 meters to the surface. Actually, it's 5,000 meters to Muna sea level. The surface could well be considerably higher up than that. I don't actually have a surface radar, but if we watch for our... There we go. There is our shadow. That gives us a measurement of our distance to the surface. It just disappeared temporarily, but that's fine. Accelerate. We don't want to hit the ground going any faster than oops we just completely arrested all velocity we don't want to hit the surface going any any faster than like about 
five meters per second probably. Like minimum thrust. All right, here we go. We're nearly down on the surface now. Three, two, one. Contact light, engine stop. We have reached the Muna surface. The Kerbals have arrived on the Mun. Um, where is, there is Kerbin over there hanging gloriously in the black sky, the black sky under full illumination. We can actually see the stars, which would not be the case under uh, a, a moon day um, because of the, uh, the amount of light that you would get reflecting off of the surface would wash out the starlight. Um, but this is, of course, the Kerbin universe. In the Kerbin universe, all sorts of things are different. Um, Valentina, do you want the honor as the first Kerbal on the Mun in this particular universe? And indeed, the first woman on the Mun. Uh, or or k k Kuman? K Kuman? Um, Wu Kerbal? I don't quite know. Um, not, not enormously elegant, but never mind. Plant your flag. Beautiful. This is one small step for curb lady kind, but one giant leap for uh, for wizards on the moon. Wizards on the moon. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautifully done. Um, should we take a screenshot with uh, with the other two quickly? Where's the Where's the sunlight coming from? It's coming from over here. We should probably have. Should probably have put the flag somewhere a bit better, but never mind. Look, this will do just fine. Bill, of course, the uh, the king of, of RCS flight, is going to land expertly. Oh, look at that, dusting down perfectly. And there they are, the Kerbals on the moon, they're all thrilled to bits. How do we take a screenshot? Is it... There we go, F12, we have taken a screenshot. The first Kerbals in this universe to land on the moon, the moon, and now... Well, actually, we need to wait for the uh, for the ship to come back around. Um, what's your guys? Oh, actually, I, I I was saying I'm worried about their life support, but of course I have no life support mods installed, um, so they're fine. I suppose they do need electricity still, do they? Or is that no longer is that no longer a thing? I think don't think that's actually a thing anymore. Uh, or maybe it was never a thing. Maybe it was only a thing when you had uh, the right mods installed. Fine, right. Well, anyway, let's get back aboard the craft because we need to return to Kerbin. Um, come on, board. And you, Bob, up you come. Changing seats around, uh, for, uh, you know, just to just to mix things up a bit. Board, very good. Uh, you can take a surface sample whilst you're here, might as well. Um, we don't have science turned on, but nonetheless, we've taken the surface sample. It'd be nice to have an animation for that in future, please. Um, Review sample. There we go. The sample appears to be comprised of a large number of materials layered over time. <gasps> we are learning so much about the moon, but this is just a flags and footprints. Um, oops. Well, never mind. This is just a flags and footprints uh, expedition. It will be followed in the future by more elaborate landers, rovers, maybe even an entire moon base. Uh, but for now, it is just enough to have to have tested. The technology is necessary to get here. Time has not been allowed in this mission for an extended stay. With all sorts of faffing about. We've got two guys literally who are just stuck in their spacesuits for the whole time. Unless we cycle them through the lander can. Which we could do. But we're not going to faff about with that today. Alright. We need to wait for this to come around and just be cresting the horizon. So let's do that. Time accelerate for the main spacecraft. Which is going to return us. Okay. No, that's fine. I wondered what this thing going down was, but actually it's nothing to be concerned about. Let's wait for the main spacecraft to come around. We want it to be just rising over the horizon as we launch. That is the rule of thumb for orbital rendezvous. At least that's my rule of thumb and it seems to work. Um, let's target it. Set as target. Uh, we want to make sure we're controlling from here. Good. Valentina Kerman, you are in command of the spacecraft once again. She is yours to uh, to take up. So, three, two, one. Firing ascent engines. Raising landing gear. We are rising up. We're just gonna we're just gonna take her up to like about there and then 
Let's make sure we get this going in the right direction. That's not the right direction. Oh, we need to actually look. Um, um, this way. This way. No, this way. <laughs> Stop it, you're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way, woman. That's better. That's much better. Okay, good. That's not too bad. Let's add a manoeuvre node to extend this out. Um, what what is what is that? That's what we want. Look, we got we've got an intersection four point three kilometers. That's perfect, actually. That's absolutely perfect. So. Let's go for that burn. Where is it? There's our maneuver node. Maneuver estimated burn 11 seconds in three minutes. So let's time accelerate to that. This is not, again, a masterclass in perfectly efficient orbital maneuvers and orbital rendezvous. But if it gets the job done, frankly, it doesn't matter. The Kerbal Way is for uh, for glory and, um, and, and explosions over fancy efficiency and such. Right, here we go. Firing the engine for the full burn. Eight seconds, six seconds, four seconds, three, two, one, cut engines. We now have orbit. Just gonna give it another quick burn. Try and get a little bit closer. Cut the engines. All right, get rid of the maneuver node. We are coming in pretty close now, actually. 4.1 kilometers. What we'll do is we'll get to here and then we'll ch we'll halt our relative motion to the target by hitting uh, this this maneuver node here. This should reduce our velocity re with respect to, to the target. So let's time accelerate. Where is it? Where is the, the spacecraft? There it is, the Wizards, Wizard X Mark One spacecraft coming in to fire our engines. Target speed, oh, three, two, one, zero, good. Good, we're now in effectively the same orbit. We're just gonna burn straight towards it now. Where is it? Where are you? Get our velocity vector lined up with it. And we should have a rendezvous, 0.3 kilometers separation. Um, are you guys all right out there? Are you happy to wait for us to get around? Or should we do this in a bit more, with a bit more expediency? Do it with a bit more expediency. How's that? There we go. 0.1 kilometers. Speed up till we're getting close. Here she comes, and now we need to turn around so that we can arrest our momentum once again and prepare for a transfer. Good, it's pretty close. 209 meters, we can get, we haven't got much fuel left in this thing actually, I don't want to wind up accidentally overshooting. We do have RCS actually, so uh, we could just use that. Where's, uh, where's our RCS system? Turn our RCS system on. RCS towards the target. Now we don't want to crash into it. Obviously. So let's turn around. Actually we don't need to turn around. We're using RCS. We can just reverse our engines. Where is it? Who's that? That's them. Six meters per second relative to the target. Closing. 60 meters out. Start slowing her down. We'll go like this. 20 meters out. I don't want to crash into it, whatever we do. That would be bad. It's 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Zero. We are in synchronous orbit. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Alright, we're going to be in the transfer. Um, Bill, Bob, you go first in case Valentina needs to make any orbital adjustments. Leave the seat, Bob. Activate your RCS pack. And away we go. 
Transferring to the Wizard X. This is the crucial moment. We have tested the hatch works from the outside. It doesn't work from the inside, but it works from the outside. And that's all that matters in this scenario. Grab. Grab and board. Fantastic. Fantastic. Bob is aboard. Bill, you're next. Leave seat. RCS pack is on. RCS pack is off. RCS pack is back on again. Let's go. Flying over. This is, of course, old school transferring. Um, we, we could have gone fancy and had a, a docking ring and, you know, brought the whole thing back and done all sorts of cool stuff. So much cool stuff is possible in this game. I mean, I, I, I love it to bits. I'm so glad we've reached the official 1.0 version. Um, once a few mods have been released, I'm definitely going to be playing this again uh, for my own for my own entertainment. Um, and maybe we'll do odd videos on the channel. Maybe we'll even do a whole series. I've kind of nursed this ambition of doing a grand tour um, a bit like the uh, the BBC docudrama, um, which I forget the name of. I might put a link in uh, in the description because it was awesome. Uh, it was really, really awesome, and it would be a really cool thing to do. Unfortunately, it would probably involve all sorts of like calculating of um, of, of you know specific impulse and uh, delta v and all of that kind of stuff in order to do properly. Um, but uh, but anyway, right, um, what's the best way to get back from here? I kind of forget exactly the other way. We want to go that way, because that's effectively slowing us down with respect to curbing a little bit. All right, look, that'll do. That'll do! We're not fussy. 25 second burn in 25 minutes. No problem. Got plenty of fuel. Plenty of electricity. We've got our solar panels. Everything is looking nominal. Let us time accelerate to Kerbin to Mun Escape Burn. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Activate engines for Muna Escape Burn. We are returning to Kerbin. Fuel flow is nominal. Valentina is in charge of the capsule once again, or maybe she isn't. But anyway, even if she isn't, she is. She's there to take control if she needs to. Um, that's good. It's time accelerate until we leave the orbit uh, the sphere of influence, and then we just need to add a maneuver here and decelerate us down until we enter Kerbin's atmosphere at. Now this is going to be a fairly a fairly rapid entry. Uh, we want to we want to get down deep enough that we don't skip back out of the atmosphere. I mean this is going to be totally guesswork. We want to get down deep enough that we don't skip back out of the atmosphere, but also we don't want to burn up because of the re-entry heating. So let's go for about 50. We can do a bit of decelerating if we have any fuel left once we get closer in. Um, but that's um, yeah, that's 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 it. That's all. That's all she wrote. This bit is a bit more guessworky because we haven't had to deal with re-entry heating because I haven't had to deal with re-entry heating before. Now I have to. Uh, I have to pay the price for my lack of knowledge when it comes to dealing with re-entry heating. However, by the looks of this, we're going to have a ton of fuel left, so I reckon we can arrest quite a bit of our velocity before we hit the atmosphere just by burning the engines. Good. That's good. What's our sixty thousand? That's fine. With the with the amount of fuel we've got left, that's no problem at all. All right, let's just time accelerate now as we return our brave Kerbinauts back to the planet Kerbin in glorious glory and honor for their achievement at having broken free from the bounds of the home planet and explored an, a celestial body for the first time. Turn us around and get us lined up with that. Uh, oh no, we don't have a maneuver node. Hold on. This is not the maneuver node you're looking for. Uh, we just want to be on there like that. Let's accelerate in a little bit closer. Three, two, okay. Let us. 80,000. All right, we're starting to get near the atmosphere now. Let's fire up the engines and arrest as much of our velocity as we can. Just 
going to burn the engines out at this height, I think. We're about to enter the atmosphere. Let's fold away these solar panels. Why can't I fold away the solar panels? Um, they seem to be locked, locked out. We've got a glitch in the solar panel retraction system. Space Center, is this going to impact our descent trajectory? Uh, that is unclear, Kerbal X. That is unclear. Can we jettison them? We think re-entry heating is just going to cause them to separate of their own accord. However, we're just going to have to ride it out now. There is nothing we can do. All right, we have burnt out our fuel. Let us decouple. And we're now falling freely away from the, the spent interplanetary stage, intermoonary. I don't know what that is called between the Earth uh, or between the Kerbin and the Moon, the Mun. Um, it's uh, it's interstellar bodily. Um, <laughs> interstellar bodily. Uh, yes, the, uh, the the transfer stage. You know, that's our transfer stage. That's our service module, if you like. Um, coming down. We are going to hit somewhere in the ocean by the looks of it. We're at 50,000 meters now. We're well inside the atmosphere. It's starting to thicken up. We'll probably start to see some re-entry heating. We have managed to cut most of our velocity, so we're not coming in at, at super high speeds anymore. We're just coming in at a fairly normal orbital re-entry velocity. 45,000 meters now. Still not seeing any shock heating. Uh, we still can't retract these solar panels rather frustratingly, um, but they're just going to act like kind of wings, I guess. I'm sure they'll burn up pretty quickly. We'll have to hope. We have to hope. Um, SAS module is on and Valentina is keeping our uh, angle of attack good. Centered on that heat shield. Now we're starting to see some re-entry heating as we start to get down into the thicker atmosphere. The shock heating caused by ramming through the atmosphere at over 2,000 meters per second tearing into the air now heating up to what are we at the heat shield it doesn't tell us the heat it's very very hot it's a very very hot heat shield uh, the solar panels are gone they have both clean just just been torn clean off we are not going to open the uh, the parachutes until we are through the main shock heating phase of the descent 19,700 miles per second sorry 1,900 meters per second 20,000 feet now, 20,000 meters now, 19, descending. We're actually going to um, we're going to try and give ourselves a little bit of aerodynamic lift so that we don't fall too quickly. Actually, that might be a good uh, that might not be a good idea. Um, all right, falling, falling, falling. 14,000, sorry, 1,300 meters per second now, passing 13,000 meters altitude. Still getting shock heating. 11, 1,100 meters per second. 1,900 meters per second. Speed is dropping. 800 meters per second. 700 meters per second. 8,000 meters up. 600 meters per second. 7,000 meters up. And we are through. With, I think something blew up, possibly. Um, let us open one of our chutes. And a second chute. I, the reason I opened them staggered like that because if one of them got torn off, I didn't want them all to get teared, torn off at the same time. Um, but look, uh, surface velocity has fallen to 60 meters per second now. There is something. The, um, the, the Wizard X Mark II ship debris falling towards the ocean. I don't know, maybe that is... I'd be surprised if that is the, the main stage, like the transfer stage. It could be something else that tore off the ship at some point. And maybe this, maybe the solar panels. Uh, who knows? Anyway, we are falling. We're going to activate our remaining parachutes, I think. Deploy chute. I'm deploying these by hand. Deploy chute. Um, should we jettison this? Let's jettison the heat shield. Didn't work. That didn't work. Nothing, nothing has worked. The, the heat shield apparently is stuck to us. Um, don't know why, but it is. Uh, it's, a, it's a minor glitch in what has otherwise been a hugely successful mission. Let's just deactivate SES and let the ship cruise on down through the atmosphere. We don't have full uh, chute deployment yet. 
Uh, we will get that at about 500 meters. That's fine. We're going to stop the uh, the time warp once we get to about uh, 800 meters, probably. Well, seven, five, 600. There we go. Stop it there. We don't want to go through the 500 meter barrier with time warp enabled because sometimes it will get your yeah, shoots to tear off. I don't know if that's been fixed in 1.0. It'd be nice if it had. So time accelerate uh, or time warp down the rest of the way to a splashdown here. Look, we're descending at 5.9 meters per second. That should be easily slow enough for the uh, capsule to survive, especially cushioned as it is by the heat shield there. Uh, obviously we can't actually get out of the capsule. Here we go at normal speed for the final splashdown and we are down. It's um, it's it's resting pretty it's resting pretty deep down. Uh, I, mean the, the, I suppose the crew hatch is available, um, but the uh, the rescue ship when it comes out is going to have to uh, cut away the parachute sections in order to get this open, I think. Although they managed to get it open from the outside. For some reason they couldn't get it open from the inside. Who knows why? Anyway, there you go. That is it. That is Kerbal Space Program 1.0. A special little episode. Um, just uh, just, just because I wanted to do something. And uh, you know, I had a weird Wednesday slot I wanted to fill. At 1.0 it come out. I love this game to bits. And, uh, and so I thought I would dedicate an episode, uh, or possibly two to it, depending on how long it winds up after editing. Awesome! Fantastic! There we go! Um, we want to, uh, we want to recover Vessel, and the, the, the Kerbinauts are brought back to the Space Center to celebrate Bob Kerman, Bill Kerman, and Valentina Kerbin, the first Kerbals in space, the first Kerbals to the Mun, and the first Kerbals... Um, to, uh, to, safely, to safely return as well, once again. Um, all done with uh, with just a memory of how to play this game from, uh, from back in the day. So there you go. We chose to go to the Mun. We chose to do it to prove that it is not so difficult after all. Fantastic. Right, well, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I have been Weird Wizard, and I will see you later.